Welcome to Crimepedia. This is your host. I'm Terry and I'm your host for this week. With me, as always, is my BFF. It is Morgan. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Very good, thank you. Welcome along to our show. We, we're here every week. We're always here. You can listen back to all our old episodes if you want to, right back to when we very first started. But that, they're a bit dodgy, those ones. But you can listen back if you want to. You <laughs> just go back to iTunes or wherever it is you listen, Spotify, and you can hear it right back from the very beginning. So how many episodes have we got now? I think we're on about 120. I think this might be 123, maybe. Very good. So you can go back. We had a lady, list, a new listener, um, who mentioned to me that she just started listening to our podcast, was very excited that she could go back and listen to all of our other ones. So I said it might be a good idea. Start from the beginning, because instead of getting progressively worse, then we'll just get progressively better. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise if you listen backwards we're just going to get worse and worse and worse as as we get to when we've oh. everyone's podcasts are rubbish in the beginning so it wasn't that bad right oh well I don't, hopefully I don't it wasn't that bad i think it's better now <laughs> it's a bit smoother nowadays isn't it i think yeah it is definitely yeah well yes definitely. so um some normal stuff for you we are of course getting closer and closer if you've been watching um our instagram this week we're getting closer and closer to crime con london if you fancy go in you can get yourself some Money off your tickets if you use the code Crimepedia when you get to the checkout. So definitely do that because it's it gets you um, a bit of a discount off, and then you've got extra money to spend with us in the bar, which is great. Yeah. We've got some brilliant people going to be there this year. We've got some fantastic um, speakers and some really good interactive stuff that you're going to absolutely love. So if you do have the chance to go, I highly recommend it. Let's be honest, who wouldn't want to go to London? Oh yeah, it's a lovely place. It is. It's a good place. And it's fun, and, it's gonna and be... we're going to be there, which is even better. Yep, exactly. London is going to be like, this is the greatest day in our history. Because <laughs> Cherry and Morgan are here. <laughs> and Morgan's coming all the way over as well from America. So if you haven't met him yet and you didn't see him at last year's Crime Con, then you've got the chance this year. So it's not often that you get to see us both at the same time. So you definitely mm-hmm. can. So... Into this week's case then, I've got a really good one for you this week. It's a very old case, as usual. Um, It's a case from 1981. And this case has been, um, it's called something else in the the press, but I've decided to rename it. So how do you fancy listening to this one? I'm excited. Let's go. Let's do it. On the 28th of August 1981 in Ripon, North Yorkshire, it was a hot and sunny bank holiday weekend. Ripon is a small city with a beautiful cathedral. It has a race course and is actually the closest city to Downton Abbey. Ripon is sadly also known for a very different reason, which will forever be part of its history. It will be known for the case that the media dubbed the nude in the nettles. But this is Crimepedia, and this is the case of the lady in the willow herbs. Okay, Morgan, so at 8 a.m. on the 28th of August, 1981, you and I were just one then. Oh, we were, just one. Um, A police officer, a guy called PC John Jeffries, received a phone call from a well, it's described as a well-spoken man. Now, this man had a slight trace of a local Yorkshire accent, okay? The call only lasted for about a minute, so it's not a very long call. Obviously, trace calls and things like that, tracing phone numbers back in 1981 wasn't as as advanced as it is now. So it was Mm -hmm. understood that he was possibly calling from a telephone box. Now, the man told the officer to follow his instructions, and if he did, he would find a decomposing body. Now, this was the instructions. The instructions said, this is like word for word, near Scorton Moor House, you will find a decomposed body among the willow herbs. The officer obviously then wanted to know who was calling, where he was calling from, but as soon as he was asked for his details, he said, I can't give you that information for reasons of national security, and then hung up the call. 
So PC right. Jeffries then went to like superiors and said, okay, um, this has happened. This is what he said. And they told him basically to go and investigate it, go and see, go to the location that the callers described, see what you can see and, and let us know. So I think from reading between the lines, I kind of think they weren't expecting, they thought it was like a bit of a hoax call. They weren't actually expecting to find anything. So the police officers at Ripon Police Station followed these instructions given by the caller, but un- were unable to start with initially to find anything. They continued searching though, and then made a grisly discovery. Now the police found some bones hidden in the undergrowth near to Sutton Bank Top, which is near the junction with the A170 to Scarborough Road. Now, CID were called to come in and they were led by Detective Chief Superintendent Strickland Carter. They searched the location to try and find the rest of the body that they had found these bones from. They removed a massive area of willow herbs over a period of about several hours. So I looked into willow herbs. There are over 197 species of willow herbs. They can grow way over like six foot tall. They're like thick they're like meadow, I would say like meadow flowers. They're like thick, bushy greenery, but then they've got these pretty bright flowers all over them. So they come up quite high. Um, and say like if somebody was hiding them, you wouldn't be able to see them unless they'd crush them over. Mm-hmm. So you could quite easily, if you were a small kid or an adult, you can hide in there and no one would see you. So they got this big area of willow herb down and found this body Um, of what they believed to be a woman. So the body was in an advanced state of decomposition. The police suggested that that because it had been concealed under this willow herbs for all this time, they believed that it's unlikely that anybody would have ever found the body by accident because they were really well, like really, really well um, concealed. Now, Scorton Moor House was a family picnic area at the time. I've looked it up online and there's no sort of pictures of it back in 1981. But mm-hmm. there is pictures of um, police doing like fingertip searches there. There's no pictures of like the area because the police have never actually revealed exactly where the body was found. Okay. I think yeah. now it seems to either be a farm or farmland or like a private re- residence now as far as I can I can see. So the woman they found was laying on her back and she had she was almost parallel to a dry stone wall. Her remains were mostly skeletal. She was completely naked, no clothes, no jewellery, nothing on her or around her to identify who she might be. The police did a really, really good job in this case, though, because they catalogued, which is, I I don't say this very often, they catalogued every single tiny object that they found around Uh that area, like everything. Um, They took hours photographing the scene. They um they only discovered a couple of things that could be potentially significant. So there were three fresh tracks leading to and from the body. I believe these might have been um vehicle tracks, but don't quote me on that because there isn't anything to say whether those tracks are footprints or whether they're vehicle tracks. Oh, okay. so all I, all we've got tracks. in the mute is just tracks. Okay. Now there's another thing. There was a meat. In the police report, it says that there was a meat paste lid lying beneath the woman. So under her body, you know, like meat, a meat paste? paste. Yeah, you know, like a meat paste. Like, no, I don't. Like spam? No, like, um, let's think. What do you, uh, you know, when you have, um, oh, what's that stuff called? It's, you have it with like crackers and it's like meat that's like, oh, mushed up. Yeah. Oh yeah, a, yeah, like yeah, a paste, well, uh, you know, like a yes, you can get like duck liver no. and our dead pate, like no. pate, pate, yeah, yes, no, like no, pate, no, no. yeah. So apparently there was this lid that was underneath the body. A lot of okay. reports I've read also say that it was a yogurt pot, but the pol- I'm going with what the police wrote. So the police in their report wrote that it was a meat paste. Now this was dated October 1979. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yes. So 1979. Now she was found in 1981. Okay. She, it obviously, like I said, it was described at some sites as a yogurt lid, but most the police and other, other sites do actually say about this meat paste. Now the home office analysis of the body and the plant growth around the body confirmed that they thought the body would have been there for a minimum of 12 months, but most likely yes. two years. So we'll place her death in 1979, which actually matches up with the meat paste lid. 
Okay, so let me ask you about the body. You said it was in this willow herb, yeah. which I had to kind of look up to, to see what they yeah. look like. Yeah, then you can see what it, what it looks uh, like. They're, they're, they're like a, well, we, in the States, we'd consider it like a flowery flowery weed or wildflower, yeah. I'd guess. Yeah. Was her body, and I I, I don't, don't know if I, if I heard this properly or not, was her body like on the ground or yeah. was it like on top of the willow no, weed was, and the willow weed they've grown grew around, around her. her yeah so like she's laid down like underneath i guess and it's all grown up around her so you wouldn't have seen her lay there i think she was underneath mm-hmm. them so whether i mean i look when you look at those flowers you could probably crawl in between them couldn't you if you look at them that yeah, you could crawl yeah. in between them and because they're so big it probably wouldn't move that much so you could probably get in and amongst it, which made me first of all think, was she homeless? And she's gone in there to try and find a safe place to sleep where, you know, that's that was my first initial thought. Was she homeless and you could get in there with no one seeing her? But it's a very, uh, would you, I would consider it remote, right? Where well, she yeah, was found, like a it, remote area. It is, It's but it's like a place that people go for like picnics and stuff. So it's like there would be people there quite a lot. Yeah. Huh. So it's not like it's like the middle of the moors or something and no one's going to find her. Right. It is somewhere where families go for picnics and people go there mm-hmm. to exercise and do all different sorts of things. Yeah. But I mean, usually when I think of someone that's homeless, I I, I think I like, well, I don't, I don't want to say I like to imagine. Mm. Um, they, they tend to congregate in, in more urban areas yeah, where they can have access to different services or, you know, more people to, you know, ask for then, money for them or, or whatnot. Yeah. I mean, this is in 1981. So I'm wondering, then I th- was thinking, oh, perhaps it's somebody who's had an argument with her husband and she's just gone mm-hmm. out and then she's gone and slept there because it's safe and it's covered over and no one's going to find her. Uh, there's no, right. when, when you're homeless and you're sleeping in the middle of the town or something in a doorway, Chances are somebody's going to, you know, you're you're in a bit of a danger because people can see you. There's a chance someone's going to, you know, spit at you or kick you or do something like that maybe. I just wonder whether maybe she's hiding there for a reason because no one's going to find her kind of thing. I guess you kind of feel, you can feel a little bit better if that was the case instead of it yeah. being the worst where it was some, some woman who was murdered and, yeah. and left there. dropped off and left, yeah. yeah. But then I wondered, could it be that this was like, you know, a couple, uh, an amorous couple that were up there, you know, in the wood, in the, in the area, and then just look, like, we'll just go in the bushes and do the deed and then we're done. Um, I wonder whether it was maybe something like that. And then something's happened and she's died. And then the guy's run off because he thought, shit, she's dead. Um, I'm just going to leave her there because no one's going to find her. I wondered if it was something like that. Mm-hmm. But we'll come to it. We'll come to some ideas of what possibly could have happened to her. Yeah, I have some thoughts just I mean, just from the little bit of information that I got so far, I mm. have like some some preconceived notions of what this could possibly be. Okay, but we'll but I won't wait for that. Okay, well the um, the cause of death obviously was very hard to determine. They were not even sure that it actually was a murder, but there were some things that we could do to rule it out. Now, some of the causes of death that can be ruled out was that there was no blunt force trauma to her head, so there was no signs that she'd been hit over the head, um, no signs that anything had happened of any damage to her. There was also no signs of any stabbings to or around her bone. So usually in a stabbing, particularly if it's quite frenzied, there would be signs Mm -hmm. where the knife had come into contact with bones and there was nothing. So they kind of ruled those two out quite quickly. Now, the postmortem of the woman's remains revealed that she had been five foot four. She had dark brown okay. hair cut into like a page boy style. So it's only like six inches long maximum. She had her toenails painted with Max Factor pale pink. So we know what brand she used. Max Factor is not a cheap brand. Um, She wore a size four shoe. Looking at her pelvis, which is really interesting to me at this part, looking at her pelvis, it was revealed that she had given birth at least two to three times in her life. So they know it was at least two babies, possibly three. She also, this is very interesting, she also had a neck vertebrae abnormally, okay, or abnormality. Okay. She had suffered she would have suffered from a bad back because of this anomaly, 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 that's it, anomaly in her (laughs) neck. Okay. So they know that she would have suffered because of this. It would have been painful. She also had a displaced septum 
and an an- she had had an ankle fracture in the past. So it wasn't fractured at the time they were, she was found, but there was a, a fixed, you know, where it had already healed itself, a healed ankle fracture. All of the victim's upper teeth and all but six of her lower teeth were missing. Okay, she had had an upper dental plate fitted. So this is somebody that has been to the dentist because she had a dental plate. She had very heavy staining on the remaining teeth in her mouth, which they believed indicated that she smoked and drank very heavily Mm. with poor oral hygiene. Now, they believe that even though she wasn't wearing a wedding ring, the police believe that she may have been married. So these are the kind of things that we know about. I don't know how they know. It doesn't say that I couldn't find that in any of the reports how they believe she was married, but they seem to believe that she was married. That's very strange. Well, this kind of gives us some sort of indication of what this woman what this woman looks like, at least, um, it, you know, what kind of state she was in. Obviously, like I said, there was no clothes found at all. So they don't know what she was wearing. They don't know whether they, she would be in raggy clothes or whether she would be in really good clothes. She had no shoes on, no underwear on, nothing. So it's literally just her body, which then makes me think she didn't just go there to die herself. She didn't go there and commit suicide because she's naked. She, um, I would say, she was put there by somebody. I would wonder why she would just how she would end up there completely naked. Animals and stuff aren't going to take her clothes and take them home. No. So that kind of made me think then, okay, foul play straight away. That would be my yeah, first yeah. thought. So yes. a little while after the discovery of the body, police did find a black evening gown and some underwear hanging from a tree a mile away. However, there has been no way, even now, there has been no way to officially link that to the woman. There's no kind of DNA from the two that can link up or anything like that. So there's nothing to to link that to her. Although I think that's quite strange. And it made me think, oh, I wonder if there has been a little bit of like hanky-panky in the bushes. And mm-hmm. somebody's taken all that off of her because they don't want her to be identified and then just hung it up a mile away thinking that nobody would ever make the correlation between the two. Yeah. So... Basically, there were no further discoveries on this. The trail went cold. The media were really good in this case of getting the little information that they had out to the public. There was nothing that could identify her. No one came forward with details of missing persons that could be her. And then a few people did try and come forward, but it, it wasn't, you know, it didn't work out with, with various different things. So obviously foul play, heavily suspected, but couldn't be definite because the police didn't have a cause of death, let alone have any kind of idea of what a potential killer could look like, could have been, mm-hmm. what age, you know, they're basically looking for a ghost. So the media dubbed this case, like I said before, the nude in the nettles, which I don't know why they dubbed it the nude in the nettles because she wasn't found in uh. nettles. She was found in willow herbs. The only thing I can think of is that it sounded better. You know, it was a better sound bite, the nude I in the guess. nettles, than the, the lady in the willow herbs, which is what I chose to call this episode because – I feel like calling her a nude is disrespectful. So I renamed yeah. it to the lady in the Willow Hose because she deserves she deserves a bit of dignity. I mean, she died an undignified death by the looks of things. And I think the reporting of this and her legacy forevermore, I don't think it should be called that, you know? So I, I changed that. And mm-hmm. My initial thought on this was like, God, surely somebody would have smelt her there decomposing because this decomposing yeah. smell is very, very distinctive and very strong with the human body. If you've ever smelt a badger or a fox that's decomposing, I mean, it's yeah. bad. A whole person, it's, a, it's an awful smell. Now, a local jockey who had stumbled, who had almost stumbled upon the body the day very close in 1979 to when we believe she might have been killed. He was out at that spot exercising horses, right, in 1979. He noticed a really foul smell emanating from the spot where the body was later discovered. He had his horse with him, so decided he would go and take the horse back and then come back and and have a look. But (laughs) on the way back, he fell off the horse and broke his leg. No. So he completely oh. forgot about the smell and oh, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because he'd got a broken leg. And it wasn't until 1981 when this um, investigation was in full swing that it jogged his memory that, oh, my God, I, I smelt that. I was there. I, yeah. So the police believe that it's likely the jockey was in the area not long after she was killed and when her body had started to, to decompose. So we're yeah. talking like a couple of weeks maybe. In, I mean, we were talking about August time that they found her. So, 
maybe it was around the same sort of time when it was hot and the body decomposed very quickly and so the smell went faster. Yeah. You know? Had the thinking about it though, had he had not broken his leg and had managed to get home, drop the horse off and get back, she may have been discovered very quickly and it may have been a yep. lot easier to find out who she was. No, exactly. Yeah. Shame, oh, isn't it? Because like it's frustrating. Yeah. Unfortunately he broke his leg and it's kind of like I'm one of the I'm a believer that things happen for a reason. And I wonder, like, in that case, he nearly discovered her, but then broke his leg and didn't get back. So that makes me think, oh, you know, was there a reason for that, you know? Yeah. That is insane. It is. So in nineteen eighty one, um, the police asked some medical students to um construct this waxwork of the woman's face. So they, along mm-hmm. with people, I think it was from Granada TV, the makeup department at Granada TV, they okay. worked alongside these scientists and they built up this like waxy bust of this woman's face. Um, and you can find that online. If you go online, you can find it. It's the only picture they've got because because they don't know who she is. So yep. um, they've got this waxy bust, which is a bit eerie. It's like one of those like death masks, but obviously it's not. No one came forward with anything significant. People did come forward and say, like, I think this might be my mom. I think this might be my sister. But but there was nothing really to um to to bring it bring it forward in any significance so in september 1983 she was then buried in molton in north yorkshire in a plain coffin and the mm-hmm. only thing that marked her grave was this small sort of stone it's kind of like a flowery shape i think um with a number on it and then it says name unknown died august 28th 1981 and that always makes me really sad it makes yeah. you really sad when you've got these graves and nobody knows who that person is. That's somebody's brother, possibly. It's obviously someone's child because, you know, mm-hmm. you have to have a mum and dad to be born. So that's someone's family and they're just there, unknown, in this coffin, no no name, no anything. It's really sad. So I'm looking at this re- this wax work, re- mm. re- recreation that they did, which I always find interesting, mm. I think is the best word to describe it. Where I understand you're able to determine, you know, you have you have most of the skull bone yeah. structure, right? So you can, based off of you know human anatomy, you can okay, we can assume this is how things are going to be placed. Yeah, but it's also it's I mean it's really best guess. Back then, I would say yes. Now, not so much. Oh yeah, exactly. Like I'm like looking at her. I'm like, well, first off, they they're completely guessing on the nose. Because yeah, there'd be no way course. that they, they would know tell. what you have. You wouldn't be able to tell. And then what's also, especially in 81, I'm like, how how were they able to determine age of the body, right? I mean, because once you get full grown, unless you're like, you're elderly and you have signs of, you know, bone decay, wouldn't it be very, really difficult to, to pinpoint like an age? I don't know. Maybe back then, but I think now is is a lot. I've got a friend that actually does facial reconstruction for a living. That's what, that's his job. He's mm-hmm. he has, actually does that and rebuilds faces of skulls that they find, and it is fascinating. But it's it's scientific. It's not just the fact they just chuck loads of clay on. It is actually yeah, really yeah. scientific the way he does it. Oh yeah. The, the the woman in this case, we know that she had a deviated septum, so we know that her nose is. It's going to be, you know, of a particular shape or it's broken in a particular area. So Mm -hmm. that's one thing that they know. They know with her vertebrae that she's got this issue with her vertebrae. So, I mean, that's quite telling. That's quite the the characteristics that they're describing. If that was your mum or your sister, that would be something you would know. You would you would Possibly. say, oh, like mum had mama had that in her name. My mum's missing. My mum always had a bad back. You know, my mum yeah. had these issues. My mum had denture plates because she had yeah. no teeth. No, no, yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, like that kind but, like, of stuff. Things, it's like, quite like things with like a a broken nose. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to tell if it went left if, or it went right if, or Well, no, yeah. well, if it was if it was something that had occurred in an attack prior to death or yeah, if it had of been something that had happened years before. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. It's very difficult. But I think like with this one, I don't know why this hasn't been solved. I don't know why no one's come forward with this information about this person. I find it a bit weird. It's always strange when when people go missing and they're never reported. It happens. Yeah, it, happens it does. A lot. Yeah. And then, you know, then you find out, okay, well, they, you know, they were found dead later on. And people are like, oh, we just thought that she went to go start a new life somewhere or, yeah. you know, whatever it might be. No, so it's very strange. Yeah. 
It is very strange. And I feel sad because at her funeral, there was nobody, it wasn't attended by anyone she knew. It was only police officers, local councillors, reporters. And I, I, that's really sad. I find that really, really sad. Um, in August 2011, investigators made a fresh appeal on this case mm-hmm. for some information and to announce that they were going to be reopening the investigation. Okay, so this is from 1981 to 2011. Um, okay. So one of the... Uh, spokesman for North Yorkshire Police said that somebody somewhere must know this woman's name. It's possible that over the years, a relationship between someone who was suspicious about a friend or relative has now changed. So now is the time to come forward and allow this woman to rest in peace. But it was in 2012 that detectives had last actively investigated this case. Okay. The woman's body was exhumed from the, the place where she was laid to rest. And they tried to gather DNA evidence from her body. Now, they always thought that there was foul play involved, but there was never enough evidence to actually officially categorize this as a full-on murder. Now, the DNA material was collected from her thighs and from her teeth, okay? Okay. They were managed to get, they did manage to get a full DNA profile of the woman. So she's got, they've got a full 100% DNA um profile now at the uh, molten cemetery once they had collected all the all the dna that they could she was reburied in the same place and the reverend rudkin performed another short service and the investigators that were working on the case there were also all in attendance And Reverend Rudkin said that it was the first time that he had ever conducted a service like this. And his, I thought it was really sweet. His little um, quote in the, in the newspaper said that God loves her. Even if we don't know who she was, it may give closure to one family if, and when this body is identified. So the police then uploaded this DNA profile to the national DNA database. The profile was then compared to samples from five different families. Two of those came forward of their own accord. The others, the police went and um, and found, thinking that they could potentially be related to this woman. But so far, no match has ever been found. Police hope that with people nowadays researching their heritage a bit more, maybe somebody has got gaps in their timeline of their family, and that might Mm -hmm. be how this lady could slot right in to where they, you know, it's happening a lot. People, um, well, I think we've people talked about nowadays this. are, yeah. No, we've talked about this before where uh, this is much more common in the United States where. Yeah, yeah. And it, it makes sense because, you know, the United States has only been around for, you know, 200 and whatever, 40 some years, right? 245 yeah. years or whatever it might be. And so as Americans, we have this sense of trying to understand like where we come from. And yeah. Who we are. And that's that's by going back and looking at our genealogy and trying to understand gen- or the generations before us and how we, how they led to where we are now. You you don't get that nearly as much as, as in the UK because, for example, I mean, if you go back and you look at, at yours, I know you have very interesting heritage and 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 things that where people have been and lived. Yeah, but you can say for the most part, yeah. If I go back four or five generations, guess what? They're from the UK. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think there's necessarily that sense of of knowing or wonderment of of where you came from because you you know. Yeah, and of course the laws are different over there. Mm-hmm. Your police force and your law enfo- enforcement can use the DNA on those databases. They can have access yes. to them. Over here, you can't. So you can't right. use you can't test the DNA on those databases that were sent off. It doesn't. They, we do, we don't allow that over here. Right. Right. So that's obviously another thing is that we can't just have access like you guys can to mm-hmm. try and track criminals, you know, how, how they caught like the Night Stalker and that sort of stuff. We, we don't have that that option here, which is also a bit. Yeah. But then I think I wonder if it's we're a little bit in England. I wonder if we're a little bit more concerned. I personally wouldn't send my DNA off to some uh, some genealogy place. I wouldn't do it. That's my DNA. It's not going. <laughs> You're not having it on your records to use and test as you want. Yeah. It's not happening. Yeah. I'm not sending my DNA off anywhere. You know, in 50, 60, 70, 100 years, there could be another cherry because you sent your DNA off. <laughs> yeah. And they've they like clone cloned you. me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know what? There's a crime scene that turns up and, oh, that lays your DNA all over it. No, not doing it. So I don't, I don't mm-hmm. trust stuff like that. But I mean, people do it and, you know, I, don't, I personally, I just, I just don't trust that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, 
So police then basically again stuck again. So what they did was they decided that in 2012 they were going to announce that they were reopening this case and to basically go through some questions that people seem to ask all the time. So they put this, um, mm-hmm. they put it up online and they had a really good response. There were a lot of comments on there, a lot of people asking questions, but a lot of the same questions being asked. So th- this I thought was genius. Because so many people were so interested in this, they decided to share the most common questions that were given to the cold case investigation team. Okay. Yeah. So these are the most common questions. This is quite helpful because these are some of the questions that I actually had straight off. So they said, could commercial DNA services be used? And they said that some online companies do offer DNA analysis of people who are interested in their family history. Customers Mm -hmm. have to opt in to share this information. And the pool of data in the UK is relatively small of people that have opted in. So they're looking into whether commercial DNA matching services could help us identify the woman. But there's potentially other information out there that could help us. So the next one, the next question was, were the national security reasons cited by the caller valid? And they said that this was explored at the time and investigators believed it wasn't true. Tracing the call would obviously be much easier nowadays if it was made from a phone box due to advances in technology, intelligence systems and obviously CCTV. They would have likely been able to record the journey to the phone box, from the phone box, and, you know, they would be able to trace this person. But obviously, most of this technology we have now didn't exist in 1981, and therefore, this caller has never been traced. Now, another question, why haven't her children come forward? We know she gave birth. Why haven't they come forward? I saw this. How how do we know this? How do we know this? How do we know what? That she gave birth at some point. Because, because of her pelvis. Because you can oh. tell the difference between a woman's pelvis after giving birth. And because of the movement oh. in her pelvis, they believe that she was she had given birth more than twice. Twice that at least. That is really interesting. So that's why. Yeah, because the pelvis I opens never up knew that. and it doesn't oh, move yeah, yeah, back yeah. Okay. after. So they know oh. that she's given birth. Yeah. Okay. So don't, If you're listening, they, don't laugh at me because I'm a dummy. But I didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know that. Well, they answered and said, we know that she had two or possibly three children, thanks to the forensic analysis at the time. However, it is possible that these children could have died in childbirth. They could have died in infancy. They could have been taken into care or never found Mm -hmm. out the identity of their mother. So all of these scenarios have been looked at by investigators. So the next one says, Mm -hmm. a caller said that the body was in a Rose Bay willow herb patch. Not many people know what willow herb is. Was that used to narrow down the search for that person? So this is a a plant that you would look at. You probably wouldn't know what it's called. You just, it's like you say, it's like a, a, a meadow flower, a wild flower, something that unless you're sort of green fingered, you probably, I had to look it up. You had to look it up. So, um, they said that yes, this knowledge was, um, used in the search for him it would suggest that he knew about nature but in rural yep. communities lots of people do so it wasn't specific enough to target the investigation in a certain area plus it was near a main road suggesting that he could have been from out of the area and just found it um, the plant was helpful to establish mm. how long the remains had been in the location okay so in 2013 The woman's DNA profile was uploaded to the database, but any potential matches or results had not been released. So the next question on the list was, why couldn't the DNA evidence taken in 2012 generate a match? Why not? And so they came back and said that there's no match currently on the police DNA database. There's nothing to link it to that it's similar to. Now, this um, DNA database was established in 1996. So it would rely on one of her relatives either committing a crime and joining the database or Mm -hmm. allowing their DNA to be used in this pool, which is unlikely. Um, Police obviously can't use the techniques around familial DNA searches because they don't have anything to compare it to at the moment. The techniques were centered on the inheritance of the male chromosome which actually affects how it can be used in the case. So actually at college at the moment, I've actually been learning about DNA and about how um, DNA from a mother and a father was inherited into a, into the child and, and which parts of the DNA the next person will take on and which, you know, like eye color, hair color, and that there's different types of it. 
There is the DNA that is inherited, which is, say, um, the stuff that you can see, like hair color, eye color. But then there's also the DNA that you can't see. So there's other things that you can inherit through through the DNA coming through into, into you, making you, that is something that was like characteristics, stuff that you can't actually see. So it's very interesting mm. to think that they're looking for the male chromosome, particularly in this. So interesting. Yeah, so very. the last kind of thing in this case that um, I could find was in 2023, the Scottish Press and Journal magazine featured an article by a lady called Susie McCauley who wrote about some potential connections to the Northeast now, they actually brought these to the attention of the North Yorkshire and Cleveland major investigation team's cold case unit. And a guy called Archie Moody, his mum, Margaret, went missing from her home in Motherwell in the summer of 1977. And somebody else called Pendle Stri- Sheriffs went missing from her home in Speen Bridge in 1958. Now, a guy called Jim Lawson came forward to say that Pendle Sheriffs was his sister. Okay. When he was four, she disappeared from her home in Speenbridge, leaving behind two young sons. Now, he is still looking for what happened to his sister because he still has no idea what happened to her. He says she was vulnerable. She was a petite lady. She was 25 years old, had two children. She seemed to literally vanish into thin air one afternoon in 1958. Okay. That one, I think, was a bit too far away from our 1981 yeah. found, you know, find, I think. Yeah. Um, but her husband, a guy called David Sheriffs, was a railway signalman, and he told police that he'd been on a night shift. When he got home and went to bed that afternoon, when he woke up, she'd just gone, just completely disappeared into thin air. So obviously the, you know, the the police looked into that, but and they said that there's a one in a million chance that these so-called nude in the nettles lady could be either of these missing women, but they are keen to help people with the DNA. Since they took the DNA sample, a lot of families have come forward to say that she kind of fits the, the age range, the children bearing that kind of thing of our family member who went missing in this date, this date, this date. And the police have Mm -hmm. slowly been kind of, they got the DNA match. They're slowly kind of getting through it. And they said that they're happy to help anybody using this DNA because it could be that the one family comes forward and and it's them. So there are, there are similarities between the the body that was found in the Willow Herbs, between Margaret Doherty and Penrill Sheriffs. They were all small women. They all had children and they're all in the same right age bracket. Now, yeah. there was talk, which there always is, that this lady could have been one of the victims of Jack the Ripper. Excuse me? Yeah, how they've come to that conclusion, I'm not quite sure, but it's what something's worth mentioning. There are there are um, there are some threads that I read online that were trying to find similarities between her body and the area that she went missing into the Jack the Ripper stuff. I think he gets pulled into everything. To be honest, I think that's, he gets pulled into absolutely everything. Uh, that's yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. No. But no. you know, it always seems to be that Jack the Ripper gets a gets a mention in in all sorts. So um, although there that's was insane. a lot of similarities, I'm going to say that's insane. <laughs> I'm going to say that's, that is insane. That is absolutely insane. No. Although there's a lot of similarities between the, obviously the two women that were missing and also this lady. Mm-hmm. So far, the lady in the Willow Herbs has still not yet been identified, and this case is still unsolved over 40 years later. Jeez. That's crazy. But it frustrates me cases like this because I feel that someone somewhere will will, will either be keeping quiet for a reason or I, I just don't, I just, it's the the things that they're talking about with her, the, the certain quirks that she's got, the fact that she's had mm-hmm. dentistry done, that kind of thing. And the fact that she was naked, I believe that that was somebody that's killed her. I, th- I think you, I think you can't really rule you can't really rule that out. It's the most likely scenario. Someone has taken all of her clothes off. Everything that would yeah. possibly identify her, they've taken it all off. It's gone. But somewhere there are children without their mum, you know, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. So this is my thought. Okay. And this is my thought from, from earlier. And, and I don't think my thought has changed. I th- Okay. I have this feeling that this might be a sex worker who was murdered. I think... And the reason why we we haven't heard from family and we don't have anyone that's been reported missing, 
I have a feeling that maybe she had cut ties with her family at some point. Okay. In the in the past, before her, of course, death. And I feel like like she might have been caught up in 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 drugs. I I just I get this sense that okay that she might have been caught up in drugs. That okay. she might have been a sex worker, and that she really had cut ties with with any known yeah. know, with any close family members. Okay. That's I just get this sense. This this seems like one of those a case like that, right? And I, usually when yeah, I can usually see why you say that. When you find, I mean, I can think of numerous unnamed women or even men who have been found in situations like this, and t- they tend to be sex workers. The closest thing I can think of here would be possibly like the Long Island, uh, Long Island serial killer. Yeah, where he would he would drop the bodies off in very similar. Yeah. Well, of course, it wasn't. It wasn't this, this willow or, but very similar um, places where a lot of overgrowth, places where people normally wouldn't be stopping and checking out because it'd be very hard to get into that area. Mm. So you think about it. You you dump a body like where this willow herb is. It's you're not going to have a whole bunch of people walking through no. the area. No. So you. So you have this sense that, okay, well, I don't have to worry about someone com- coming across this body right away. Interesting. It's very interesting you've mentioned that. See, now, I don't think it was a sex worker. I think okay. that the state of her teeth and her oral hygiene, I don't think she would make a successful sex worker. And so well, I, yeah, just yeah. just my thoughts, I just, I think, <laughs> I don't think that that's the case. I I don't know why, but my gut feeling when I'm reading through this stuff, I think it was a a a partner a partner killing. There's a word for that, isn't there? Yeah. There is a there's a something side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I I think it was a partner killing. I think okay. this was somebody who something had happened, and I think that she had been disposed of there because that's where that person knew i think they've taken everything off of her to identify her because she would have been identifiable from from her stuff and i believe that people would have known who she was so i i have a feeling it's i wouldn't say it's somebody who's like affluent because of it but she must have had some kind of income to be able to get that dentistry done so I have a feeling this is mm-hmm. somebody's wife that that that's ha- something's happened and she's ended up being dropped out there because for whatever reason whatever reason she was killed. But I don't I don't think it was a sex worker. I think this is a, hmm. a not domestic violence, but you know a domestic situation. I think yeah. it was something yeah. domestic, and I think that people had they have known that she was gone gone without explanation they maybe would be a little bit suspicious that something that she disappeared from the family or the husband had said oh she just left me or whatever yeah. i think there's something like that i think is more likely i think that somebody somewhere is suspicious of someone or was suspicious mm-hmm. of somebody at that time because they would be what in their 70s now maybe she was between sort of 25 and 35 they said so okay she would be what we're now she would be, if she was like 25 at the time she was killed we're looking at her being She'd what be... 65 70 now yeah yeah so chances are the person that did this is still alive do you get the sense that she was from the, from around that area yeah because i think that somebody would have had to have known those willow herbs were there i don't think it was just a chance thing that they were driving around trying to find mm-hmm. someone to drop her off i think she was i think she was some somewhat local um yeah. either that or the person who killed her knows that area knows because that otherwise area. why put her there you know and if she, she was somewhere local then i mean you're you're gonna be assuming that she was from a an area that that had i'm not talking huge metropolitan area but you know a significant yeah. population so yeah. a place like scarborough york maybe millborough yeah. something like that right yeah, because she's not going to be coming from what, what was what was the, the town Ripon. Uh, Ripon Ripon? It's called. Yeah, she's not going to go it's missing very small. from Ripon. Ripon, and then Ripon someone, is a small, someone, yeah, exactly. You're not going to go missing from one of these small towns, villages, no. and and 
no one's going to say notice. anything. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. But I do think that's, that's just my own thought. I would love, I would love to be commissioned to work on this case and to mm-hmm. see what other information the police have. Because they're not, they're not giving us everything. 100% they're not giving us no, everything. No, no, no. They no. haven't released not. where her body was found and there's other stuff. So I would love to work on this case because I believe that this could be solved. I really do. Because I mm-hmm. think that someone has either got suspicions that something went on in their family with a family member or it's something you know like back in the day there were certain things that the my grandmother would say no no no, we don't talk about that my my grandfather's Mm. sister was murdered by um by her husband and it wasn't Mm. talked about in our family we we didn't talk about it in front of granddad it was very hush hush and i've since tried to look it up and i can't find anything about it and but that was like in our family that was a uh -uh, you don't mention it you don't talk about it it's just yeah. how it was. So I wonder if this is the same. I wonder if this is the same for somebody's family somewhere that we just don't talk about, you know, the ki- those kids' mum. We don't talk about her. Do we know if, if these willow herbs, if they're cut down, uh, you know, in No, I think it's a season? wild area. I think it's it's just like a wild area. And I think they just so grow they just up. Kinda, they just kind of, they just die off and then. Yeah, and then regrow and that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'm, uh, you know, I, I love doing map, and so I'm doing like street <laughs> field, like looking through the area. I'm like, uh, yeah, there's not. I mean, it's been you know forty some it's different years now. now 40, that's right. Yeah, yeah, forty two years. So you still see some of this willow herb in the in the area along this little. I'm assuming that it's this small little. I don't even want to call it a road, but the small road. Yeah, that that she was found off of. You can see some of this willow herb. But it's like real close to the road. And yeah, it's so, very no, it is and, very close to the road. Yeah. So I mean, it could be that she was just you know they pulled up in a car outside, rolled her out, and then mm-hmm. pulled the her- pulled the herbs back, and then just drove off again. It could be it could be something as simple as that. This caller is very str- uh, the caller is still very strange to me. Yes. Like, how did yeah? How did they find? How did they find her? It, and they, you said there were three tra- sets of tracks. Yeah. Which almost to, is like to and from the body. I, but I wonder if somebody just discovered her by accident, discovered the bones, and then and then has rang up and said, "You know, there's a body. I don't want to give my name because I don't want to be associated with this." But there's a there's a body there. Mm-hmm. I always say to people, if you see something, you know, report it. Even if you do it anonymously, just report it because then you've reported it, and then the police can start looking at it. Even if you don't give your name or how you found something or why you found something, just just do it yeah. anonymously if you can. Yeah, I'm just. It's just strange. Like, how it did they strange, come across isn't it? it? Yeah. It's easier to, if 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 it was you know if the body was still intact and it was still decomposing and they yeah no it was smelt the decomposition that's right that makes no. more sense like okay exactly. I smelt something so then I just went to go look for you know, yeah. see what it was and that's what but the police said go, yeah but to go and say well yeah, I just happened to yeah be walking through this willow herb and i found bones <laughs> yeah it's very strange Didn't happen and that's right? what the police said the police said that the way that the body was concealed you wouldn't have found it by accident you would have had to mm-hmm. have been in there like looking and this whole thing about oh i can't give you my name because of national security is yeah, that's bullshit just, i mean yeah. it's but bullshit, what a weird right? thing to say though that's a weird thing to say i wouldn't say that's a general thing for people to say oh, i can't because mm-hmm. of national security i can't can't do that so that's a, I think that's a weird thing in the first place to say. Were police able to 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 track where calls originated no. in, in 1981? No, no not at no. all. They couldn't do it. Shame, isn't it? Like now the technology is so much better. So we don't even know how long it had been between they found the bones and they made the call. Nope. So, I mean. It could have been months. It could have say- been years. He could have been frustrated yeah. that no one had found her and decided to call it in so that his crime got discovered you don't know he could have gone because moved he, out of the area and then come back and still no one's found her yeah and so and they didn't give us a specific area they they said nope. okay we i was in willow herb yeah they won't they won't give they know obviously they know the specific area but they won't all they'll say is that it was near that top road close to the main road no, I'm saying, but but the caller didn't say exactly where it was. No, well, right? yeah, he, well, yeah, he told them exactly where it was, exactly where oh, okay. they'd find the body. So they went straight there to find it. So then that's how they found it because he told okay, them where, okay. where to look. So yeah, so he knew exactly where the body was, which is yeah, very, it indicates they're very familiar with the area. Yes, that, to exactly. Me. It seemed to me, yeah, hundred percent. Because if if I wasn't from the area and I just came across it, I wouldn't. I mean. 
I would be able to kind of just describe where it was, right? Yeah. Roughly. But I wouldn't be able to say, oh, yeah, I'd be like, well, yeah, it was off of a, what was it, A170? A170, yeah. But I, but from there, I'd be like, yeah, then there's like some little road and you kind of go back and yeah. there's fields and there's some willow herb. And it's, I mean, and it's a it's a big, and the big fact, area. And the fact that he said in the willow herb, not just in the brush yeah. or in the flowers or there's some bushes there and she's in the bushes. He actually said in the, under the willow herb. The will- so yeah, you, he normally knew, you'd say yeah, in the weeds, in the bushes, in the yeah. underbrush, whatever, yeah. whatever you might say. You don't go and say, oh, it's in the willow herb. No. Unless it was something common like roses or, you know, something that everybody knows. Dandelions, yeah. daisies, <laughs> yeah. sunflowers, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Not a willow herb. Strange, isn't it? Yeah. If, I if wonder, you... if you give a poll to, say, like, I don't know, 20 adults, I wonder how many of them would accurately guess that that will accurately tell you that oh, that was no. a willow herb. I don't, think, I don't think it would be. No, I could see people say, oh, I don't know, lilac? Or, <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Stuff like that. But no, I mean, like looking at it, I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell you what that was. No, me either. I had to look it up. So yeah, so that is this week's case. Huh. This one's very interesting. It was. I knew you'd find this one interesting. And it's frustrating to me that it's still unsolved 40 odd years later. Right. And I think I think it could be. I think it could be solved. I think it could be solved. Yeah, I think so too. And but this is gonna be this is gonna be a DNA case. I think this is yeah. something that has to be Someone's um, gonna have to come forward with information on this one. Yeah, exactly. I don't think they're gonna it, stumble it, but, across the answer. Police are going to be hamstrung just because of the privacy laws in the UK. They're going to yeah. be they're going to be hamstrung because of the the lack of DNA to, to compare it to. Yeah. So you're yeah. not going to get a situation where you're going to be able to do, you know, the the family ge- DNA or uh, genealogy and be able to go. Okay, well, this they they're definitely related to this person. Now let's see. That's right. Yeah. It, that's right. Yeah. So Sadly. it's going to be difficult. Um. Uh, it's uh, I still feel like it's going to be DNA that would solve it. Yeah. If it if it was a family member that was like, you know what, I wonder what happened to Aunt Lisa. Yes. Or whatever. Yeah. You would think that by now someone would have come forward and said, hey, you know, maybe I had they the, can't. Aunt Lisa. She disappeared in the seventies, yeah. and I would just wonder what happened to her. Maybe until the death of somebody, maybe they can't do that just yet. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. But it's it's worrisome because this is an old case. It's yeah. going to get older. Yeah, people that people that did know this woman, yeah. they're getting older. That's right. They, you know, and, you know, people die. I mean, yeah, that's that's yeah. a fact of life. We, that's right. We live, we die. That's right. So people are going to get older, and then the number of people that could possibly have known her is is going to get smaller, smaller and smaller as the years yeah, go you're right. go go on. Yeah, you're right. It's sad. It's a sad thing. So this is one of those cases, like, if, if you know of anyone who, you know, disappeared. Yeah, and your family, you know, just if kind you're of, from that area, just look just, it up. Just look it up. Just, yeah. Just ask. It's not know, that just, hard. Oh, you, ne- you never know. Ask questions. Yeah. Ask questions. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if, yeah, it could be that that person who, who was once in your life or once in your parents' life or grandparents' life who, who kind of just, like, yeah, dropped off the face of the earth. Yeah. They, they yeah they could be fine they could be just living their life somewhere else or they could, they could be have her. been a victim they could have been mm-hmm. her exactly ask questions and look into it it won't hurt no exactly. it won't hurt i totally agree so yeah well i'll keep looking into this and i will keep you updated with anything i find so fancy lightening the mood a little bit i would how about some dumb criminal let's go Hey, Captain Stupid Poopy Pants, use a dummy. All right, Chair, I think we can all admit that that teenagers, especially teenage boys, are, are idiots. Oh, right. okay, yeah. I, I'm allowed to say this because I once was a teenage boy who was an idiot. Yes. Okay. One thing that teenage boys have a fascination with is fire. Penises. For whatever oh, okay. reason. Fire, yeah. Yeah. For other, we, we love fire for whatever reason, and we like to set stuff on fire. We like to play with fire. <laughs> and I, I remember, I remember a friend would, would, you know, well, more than one friend that would often get like an aerosol spray oh, and a God, lighter yeah, and like great, this. you know, yeah. like the flamethrower. Yeah. Cause yeah. Oh, look at this, it's cool. I remember the boys at school doing that too. 
Well, a teenager in the city or the town of uh, Ephrata, I believe it is, Pennsylvania, Mm -hmm. learned a very valuable lesson in the dangers of fire. Okay. Okay. So the boy was playing with a lighter and aerosol spray, and it ended up leading to an apartment fire. Oh, God. Which has left three families displaced from their homes. Oh, no. After a fire tore through the apartment building. Oh, dear. So the police department in uh, Ephrata say that the boy was in a garage when he was playing with the lighter and aerosol spray, Mm -hmm. which quickly was engulfed by fire and spread to multiple apartment buildings. Oh, no. Yeah, so three of the families in one of the apartment buildings are displaced due to the electric service lines and electric meters being melted by the fire. So it was a huge fire. Oh, big fire. Yeah, so and then fire officials were quickly able to determine that the fire had been started by the teen who was Mm. recklessly playing with a lighter and aerosol can. Idiot. So this ended up leading to items in the garage catching fire. And like I said, at least three buildings destroyed in the fire luckily oh, wow it, i mean luckily that was it i mean because this could have been oh yeah it could have killed people, i mean it was already serious it could have been worse yeah so so teenage boy who is na- nameless yeah. you are a dummy <laughs> you are and if you're at home and you're listening to this don't play with aerosol cans and, don't, and lighters don't play with fire don't do that don't, don't be a, be a dummy. Ass. Don't don't end up on our show, people. <laughs> no, don't do it. No. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, Seriously, I mean, it's a so dumb to be doing. Yeah, Very dangerous. It is. Yeah. So it's not going to end three well. Families that have nowhere to live. That's you have right. Three people that or three families that have no home now because you decided it was going to be fun to play with fire. Dumbass. Fire is dangerous, people. It is. It is indeed. It's very dangerous. It is. He's lucky he didn't lose lose his life with how quickly yeah. the garage went up. Yeah. Yeah. He's lucky someone wasn't oh. killed and he'd have a, and have a murder charge or, a, you know, oh, something know. like that on his hands. I mean, all, yeah, you know. he could have. I mean, I'm sure that he's going to be charged with something, you know. Yeah, yeah. As a, as a juvenile, he's going it, to, you know, he's not going to get, you know, prison time or whatever. But, he's yeah, he's absolutely lucky that no one no one got seriously no hurt. Got hurt. No one That's died. right. Yeah. Oh, dear. Well, thank you for that. That is it for this week. We will be back next week, and it will be Morgan's case next week. So between now and then, you can catch us on our social media and be nice. And bye. (laughs) Bye.